What's up guys, A1A Retrofits here. Today we're going to show you how to fabricate a bracket when a bracket doesn't exist. So this one, these sets of headlights are from a 2000-2006 GMC Sierra Yukon Denali. Uh, these are the Spec D style housings and you know usually we would have a bracket, uh, this, either the Spec D or Spider style bracket. You can see it's very traditional, you got usually left, right, I'm sorry, up, down, left, right adjusters, and then one pivot point right there. Now we lined up our spec D bracket to, th bracket to this, it didn't match up. Um, this is just a little bit larger, so we have to fabricate something. So if you look at the back of the projector itself, this is what it looks like. You have, like I said, the two uh, adjusters there, and then there's another, the ball joint goes right there. So essentially what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this bracket, and we're gonna cut off the reflector bowl. And we're gonna actually use just this top, just the, basically this flat piece of metal as the bracket, because again, we don't have a bracket for this style yet. So eventually what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna take apart this projector itself. And we like to use the A18 Retrofits, they're our E1 projector, because it is mini H1 styled, and uh, it's extremely versatile for a housing just like this. You need something very compact to be able to fit in those housings. Uh, Micro D2S will fit, but anything G5 or up will not fit. It's just, it's, it's wider than the actual frame itself. Now our E1 has multiple mounting points. You can see we have the traditional H1 up there, and then we have these uh, four ones here on the side. These are extra, and uh, this is where it's gonna come into play. So like I mentioned, we actually already did the work. This is the existing bracket for the spec D. And what we did was we took our projector, we lined it up, and we used these four holes here on the side. These ones here on the sides. And the reason why is because the ones that are fitted up here and down here are gonna hit the adjusters. So we drilled out the holes, made sure that this, lie, this side was uh, parallel with this one, with the sides of the projector itself. And then, then all we did was kind of just open it up here. So now, you can see this one fits perfectly and now the projector is going to be used the old projector uh, reflector housing or the, the you know the reflector bolt it's going to be the new bracket so like i said this is for those methods where a bracket doesn't exist or just slightly a different size but you can tell um, perfect so the first hurdle is complete we have successfully mounted the uh, E1 projector to the old projector body, but using just the bracket. So you can see, and of course we didn't tighten it up, we didn't lock tight it, but this is just for video purposes. So this is the first hurdle that we've gone through is that we were able to mount that there. The second problem now, if you notice, if we line up the projector bodies, I'm trying to get this on camera so you can see it better. You can see that with these lined up, our projector st sits about uh, about half inch further forward. Now, if we were to mount this projector right back into that housing, this part is gonna hit the bezel. I know that from experience, we've seen it many times. There is no modifying the projector body, the E1 projector body to fit there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify this housing. Now you can see this pivot. Now this is the fixed point in the entire headlight. These ones will be able to adjust the projector body front, back, left, right. This one cannot. So, if you look really closely, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this ball joint. Okay, so now we removed the ball joint here. And you can see that it has a washer here, a spinning washer, and there's a little standoff right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that standoff and I'm going to cut it completely flush with the um, back of the housing. That's going to push the entire projector backwards because remember the two lower ones will be able to adjust left, right, and up, down, but the pivot point at the top will push the entire projector back. Now is that enough clearance? I'm not sure yet because I haven't uh, tested it, fitted it yet, but just my gut feeling is that that is still not enough to push it back. Second modification I'm gonna do, remember this little spinning washer? So the spinning washer is preventing it from bottoming, bottoming out and kind of going too far back. Now I'm gonna cut this washer off so I can actually screw this one further into the body. That makes more sense. So once you screw this, so essentially this part of the shaft 
about here will be hidden, pushed back. That will definitely give me enough clearance. So I got about a quarter inch there, a quarter inch here or so, and that'll give me my half inch clearance to make sure that this doesn't hit the bezel. Of course, I'm gonna cut this off as well, just so it doesn't get in the way. Now, a lot of times, this is that standoff I was talking about. So this is that where the ball joint kind of screws into place. Uh, sometimes you don't have this um, where it kind of, you can go back and it might be a little bit flush. So when you do screw that in, the, the ball joint, it will actually poke out the back of the plastic here. Just add a little bit of um, JB weld there. Now, of course I am gonna JB weld. I'm gonna add JB weld inside there and then I'm gonna put the ball joint in so that way it's nice and sturdy. But essentially that's what's gonna cause the projector to sit further back in the headlight housing to give me the clearance for this projector. So if that makes sense, or if that helps anybody with a uh, retrofit that doesn't have a readily available bracket, um, you know, like the video. Thanks guys.